Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome back to Hilal Life. Thanks for joining us. Uh, before the break, we chatted to an entrepreneur who's just amazing and does wonderful things in and around our beautiful community. But speaking about our communities, we do know that uh, with the onset of COVID, we've had lots of uh, dire need with regards to aid, support, businesses closing uh, their doors as well. And one such organization has really infiltrated into our communities. They're a national organization and no stranger to Hilal and our uh, Islamic community as well. I'm talking about the good people from Sanzav and I've got the CEO of uh, Sanzav in studio. And you know, I've made it big when I've got the CEO of Sanzav in studio. Uh, Yasmina Franke, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See, I brought you on with a smile. So <laughs> you that, did. You know, then people yes. think CEOs are all so serious all the time, but you're not because you work in that space hmm. where you've got to reach out to communities. Oh, sure. You've got to have that heartfelt a desire and also that compassion mm. that that you you need to you know show the communities as well um wonderful achievement and i alluded to this before the break as well is that sansev has now turned 50 years old if you look back yes mina i mean mm. um it stands as a as a very prominent sansev stands as a very prominent pillar uh, in the community. Can you maybe share some of your uh, exciting news and yeah. insights about the organization, uh, organization's journey mm. and then mm. maybe focus on all the wonderful achievements mm. in the last 50 years? I know you haven't been there for the last no, 50 I years. No, I haven't. Alhamdulillah. I've been connected to the community for probably 50 years. That's also true. Alhamdulillah. Um, in the sense that I was still very young when my mother pulled us along. She was a volunteer for Sansa in the okay. early days. Oh, wow. And she used to pull us along to their fundraising events on a Saturday. They used to do cake sales and, yes. and, and you know, use uh, clothing sales. And I had no idea what I was doing. I was just tagging along. Mm. As I got older, I realized what that was all about. So Alhamdulillah, I think for most of Sands of History, I, I may have been involved, but I think more consciously later on in years, right. serving as a board member um, in the Western Cape. Now, and my formal um, role in Sands of, so stretches to over 20 years. Oh. So Alhamdulillah, the 50th anniversary for us Although the official date is only the 12th of April. Okay, and it's also my birthday month. How's that? Oh, mashallah, right? Yeah. So good things happen in April. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, so I think it's just such an exciting milestone and something that we we really want to kind of honor and commemorate. So we decided we're doing it for the whole year. Oh, right? nice. So okay. otherwise it's a one-day thing mm. and Sons of is is, is about sustainability mm. and and there is just so much in our 50th year to be grateful for mm. that we're wanting to ensure that we share that you know gratitude with so many people that okay. have kind of whose journeys has intertwined with sense of mm-hmm. and so we planning you know a multitude of of um, engagements through the year mm-hmm. but just reflecting on sense of history so in 1974 it was established mm-hmm. it was something that came out of a resolution of a Muslim Youth Movement Conference right. in the 1970s. And you can imagine, um, uh, Lukman, what it was like in the 70s in yes. terms of who was taking care of those who were really in need. Mm. And I think the government at the time was probably taking care of those that they felt needed um, assistance and not necessarily everybody. There was lots of exclusion. Mm-hmm. And the idea was that as Muslims, we you know, kind of establish the things that we need mm-hmm. from a deen perspective we build masjids we you know run madrasas we kind of get halal food outlets mm-hmm. and you've also seen islamic uh, finance grow in Absolutely. south africa yes. so at that same time there was the idea of institutionalizing zakah okay. so that and the muslim community was growing um and so the idea came about um in 1974 alhamdulillah and our first official um, head of Sanzef was, was Dr. Shoka Token. Alhamdulillah, Allah grant him Jannah to Firdaus, inshallah. I had the pleasure of meeting him yeah. a couple of years ago. Um, but at that time, his health was already ailing, but yeah. a wonderful man. And he had, with him and all the other founding members, Sheikh Faik, Faik, Faik Hamildin, mm. whom we all, you know, kind of, you know, dearly respect and, and honor. Um, his role was here in, in the Western Cape. Okay. And the two of them met. And at that time, it was primarily in the Western Cape. That no. Sounds like, oh, was it No, Shefaik was running 
of Western a, Cape? A Zaka operation, small one okay. in Western Cape, okay. in Cape Town. And Dr. Shoko Token was in the Transvaal, right? Okay. And then the two of them came together and there was a meeting of minds. Mm -hmm. And then that's when the fund, the national fund was established. Hence the name, the South African National Zakar Fund. So it brought together the North and the South. And uh, three years after its formation, uh, the Durban office was established. Um, and through the years, I think 10 years into its running, it, it published the first diary. Amazing. Can you believe it? Wow. 40 years later, it's become one of the most popular things. Absolutely. I think also, um, you know, in that time, we also published, I think in the, uh, just as we hit the 21st century, we published, the we launched the first Zaka calculator on CD still. Okay. So oh, that goes many, goes many years back. back. And yeah. I think it was probably more in the format of an Excel spreadsheet, but nonetheless, it was part of that Zaka advocacy mandate mm -hmm. that we needed to educate around the importance and you know the significance of the model of Saka right. and um, and having you know the tools that facilitate the understanding of how to calculate Saka that aid you mm. also mm. it can only lead to you know the individual the Muzaki who pays the Saka you know kind of fulfilling an act of Ibadah but mm. also in that loop of giving mm -hmm. there's those who are receiving for their dire needs right. so alhamdulillah that was something that was also that i remember and over the years we've gone from three offices as i mentioned mm -hmm. in the north in durban and in the western cape alhamdulillah we now have 27 offices and initially it was the three provinces now we have a footprint in eight um, hubs in south africa um we had a few staff members way back in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, we have over 100 staff members. Sure. And sometimes it almost feels like there isn't sufficient resources Enough. on the ground <laughs> to do all the work. Of but course. Alhamdulillah, we, we're blessed to have been able to keep our doors open for 50 years. And it, would only have, it is only possible through the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. and the people that he sends to us. You Absolutely. know, who has, you know, developed the trust in Sanzaf and, and the work that we do and, um, you know, has those generous hearts mm. that also has a match in terms of the values that they see from Sanzaf Absolutely. and that of their own. So, alhamdulillah, over the years, it has been a phenomenal ride. And I think, you know, Sanzaf was one of the first organizations that also hosted international conferences nice. around Zaka and, and Wakaf um, in the sense that, you know, we also was a founding member of OCAR. Okay. So Wakaf and Zaka, we wanted to keep the conversation alive about it and, and, and build an understanding of how your obligatory charity mm. and your discretionary charity can work together to address the needs of individuals, but also those perpetual rewards that, mm. that can mm. also be sustainable for communities. Of course. Yeah. Yes, you know, you know the, Alhamdulillah, 50 years of collecting and distributing zakah, you know, it's an achievement right there. I mean, you know, anything over 10 years, that's an achievement right there. And the organization, but, but tell me about um, what is 50th, your 50th anniversary, a mean or symbol, symbolize maybe to yourself? Mm. I know you mentioned your involvement for so many years yeah. from your mom's involvement um, and maybe the organization yes. as well. So Alhamdulillah, I think for us, it's a phenomenal milestone, but I think it's also time for reflection. Mm. I think when you, at the age of 50 as an organization, you have to ask yourself, what have we achieved? And have we made the realization that what worked in the past, mm -hmm. is that going to work in the future? Mm -hmm. Have we taken a good look at, you know, how our environment is changing? Mm. And what do we need to do to be as relevant as we were in the past 40 years? 50 years for the next, next absolutely. good 100 decades, if Allah will. And, and I think that is the gift of this 50th anniversary, that opportunity for us to do that reflection. And we unmistakably know that whoever we are engaging with today mm -hmm. is going to be different tomorrow. Maybe mm -hmm. not a different mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. It will, might be still Lukman. Sure. But Lukman is going to make decisions differently. Mm -hmm. Lukman is going to want to transact differently. Mm -hmm. Lukman is going to need different things before he decides where he wants to place his zakah. Mm -hmm. And how are we responding to that? And so for us, that's the significance of this 50th. And Alhamdulillah, we are embracing the digital future. We understand that that is where the world is, is going. Mm -hmm. And we want wanting to also be appealing to the younger generation. Inshallah. Our future donors, the ones who have you know qualified and 
you know, walked into great jobs, alhamdulillah, and are also now accruing their own wealth. Of course. Um, what is it that is important to them? So I think that's the significance of the 50th and that absolute sense of gratitude mm. that we need to go back to the communities who have supported us. And um, I think such vital points that you've raised, uh, Yasmin, especially the younger uh, generation that is growing and um, allowing them to also understand why the need for zakah Absolutely. is, uh, but also perpetuating and that ripple effect mm. that it can have to their kids and so on and so Absolutely. on and so on. And hence uh, the ripple effect of um, what Sanzav can then do within our communities. And people think it's just Zakat, but there's so much more. And we're going to get into that after the break. I have a very close affiliation to Sanzav and I've seen things done firsthand. Yeah. And that is why I can only say Alhamdulillah mm -hmm. as well. After the break, we chat a bit more to Yasmina Franca, who is the CEO of um, Sanzav. Uh, it's the 50th year anniversary, Alhamdulillah that is uh, embark they're embarking on and they're spreading out uh, the message and the um, the awareness around various communities through the year. Do join us after the break. Our WhatsApp line will be open as well if you'd like to share a special story, uh, a special memory. You're welcome to do that on our WhatsApp line. You are still watching Hilal Live. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Hilal Live. Thanks for watching us on channel 347. Also on our live stream, www.hilal.tv. And if you've been uh, joining us since uh, a couple of minutes ago, I uh, decided to invite the CEO of Sanzav uh, in studio, Yasmina Franca, chatting about the 50 year anniversary and all the wonderful work they've done to this point and all the work that they continue to do on a daily basis and will be doing in the near future as well. Yes, Mina, Jazakala so much for coming into the studio. Always lovely catching up with Sanzev and more, you know, knowing about all the wonderful projects that you do. I know you must be so inundated with so many projects being the 50th year anniversary. It's a big celebration. Mm. It's a big thing. Not saying the 49th wasn't, <laughs> yes. uh, but you know, it's such a landmark and it's such a, a, a wonderful uh, achievement mm. as well. Focusing on the impact work that mm. uh, Sanzev does for the needy. I've heard about some incredible and i've witnessed some incredible projects uh you know marking uh, the 50th anniversary this year can you maybe share uh more about these initiatives mm. and maybe give us a glimpse of what's planned for mm. the remainder of the year with this regard so alhamdulillah we you know we chose the 16th of january when everybody was starting to get back mm -hmm. um into the swing of things um the 16th of january for us as a team to you know, collectively coordinate one of the things that's very important still in our country, which is food security. Mm -hmm. So we coordinated in and around all the offers that I spoke to you about earlier. Mm -hmm. We coordinated one mass feeding scheme on the 16th just to kick off our 50th year. Okay. And we had, um, all in all our eight hubs, we had 50 feeding schemes being coordinated all at the same time on one day mm -hmm. and at the end of the day we aim to to, to serve a hundred thousand meals in the one day wow. alhamdulillah and so sure. obviously it's the kind of thing that we do regularly it's one of the main you know kind of welfare relief that sanzev does because the need is so great and often we talk about the the principle of giving a man a fish and mm. you just feed him for the day and they're encouraging to teach the fish, give the rod, and you um, essentially feed him for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. But the reality, as much as we really truly believe in that, mm -hmm. we have a dual focus because the reality today is that we still need to give the fish, sure. right? Because a hungry child cannot learn. A man whose belly is making a noise is going to be reluctant to go look for a job. Mm -hmm. So we do that, and we kicked it off because we felt that at that point in time, Kids were just going back to school. The December holidays are gone. Monies were difficult to come by. Mm. And so we, we said that often. And it was one of those campaigns that we felt was impactful in the sense it got people, you know, that start of the year, that sense of hope. Yes. So somebody cares. Gotcha. Uh, and mm. alhamdulillah that we were able to do. But in and around that time was also the time that we unveiled the new logo. Okay. We launched the new website. And I think the idea with that was that because this is an important milestone for us we also needed to encapsulate that in how we present ourselves mm, to to mm. the masses and our logo is one of those things that people really recognize and they have an attachment to it because when we tested how we could change it so many people were like no you mustn't change sense of logo i recognize it wherever i go so we kept a lot of the elements that that you know the the 
you know, House of Zaka, the mm -hmm. Beitus uh, Zaka, um, our wording, the circular but, um, kind of design of it. But all we did was was just modernize it a gotcha. bit, you okay. know, make it come alive for the current time and so that it can also live for a good number of years. Right. And at the same time, the website, because like I said to you, we're embracing technology mm. and there's a lot that we, you know, kind of transact and engage with on, in the digital platform. And so we've done that also. But those, the things that we're still going to do for the year, mm -hmm. One of the things that I have, you know, sort of kind of an affinity for, and I can't wait for it to happen, is during Arbor Month, right. we will be planting fifty oh, trees, inshallah. Lovely. And I think the idea with that is is about sustainability. Of course. And you often hear the the saying that you know the wise man is he who plants a tree, the shade of which he knows he's not going to enjoy, but it's for there for someone else to enjoy. Mm. And I think that for us is kind of a legacy thing. We're also launching a growth fund, inshallah, okay. and the growth sure. fund is the idea of becoming sustainable for the organization. So mm. we're looking for donors to come in with a capital investment mm -hmm. and the returns on the investment to plow that back into the running of the organization. So inshallah, that we also conscious about mm. what it costs to run this organization. Absolutely. And what yeah. it costs for us to distribute others zakah. Yeah. And so we need to do something about it. So the launch of the growth fund is there. Right. You had a very special launch today though. Yes. Very quickly. Tell yes. our viewers about that. So today, which was a follow up from something that happened about two weeks ago. Today we launch a literature for the youngsters. Okay. We launch a book called Journey to Kindness. And I think what that idea was that if we're talking about Zaka and also the idea of read, Ikra, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. encouraging reading, both Ikra and Zaka for mm -hmm. me, those words represent hope. Right. And so it was a culmination of that where we, we published a book for the younger generation, mm. the little ones, because we want to encourage the, 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 the idea of being kind and you know how you can be kind in your little way as a youngster. It's not something mm. mommy and daddy needs to do. Mm. It's something, and, and the parents can instill that kindness mm -hmm. because from that, grows the compassion of course. and later on, inshallah, the understanding of what Zakar needs to do. Okay. But we did this off the back of a previous book that we launched about okay. two weeks ago. We published a book on the 40 Hadith on Zakar and Beautiful. charity. And so Alhamdulillah, it is about Zakar advocacy for us, which mm. is important. And so this, you know, literature items are part of that, you know, growing the understanding of Zakar. And also what you'll be seeing this year is the launch of our Zakar Academy. So that's, that's big for us. Wow, for that's amazing. Year. A lot happening <laughs> yes, uh, in this like. year. We uh, need to keep up, uh, mm. basically. Yes, you know, with uh, Ramadan around the corner and uh, the Sanzab teams actively consulting and assisting Muslims across South Africa uh, in fulfilling their Zakar, mm. How are you and your team working uh, or, um, you know, making uh, Sanzab a trustworthy, mm -hmm. impactful experience for all South Africans, especially during this month of Ramadan? Yes, Alhamdulillah. I think if we look to uh, just Sanzab's trend and experience through the years, mm -hmm. During the month of Ramadan, uh, we, you know, everybody's out, the entire team is engaging with communities, doing consultancy, doing collections of zakah. Mm -hmm. So there's a hub of activities, but we also understand it's a lot about money, you know, kind of moving from the donor to yes. Sanzaf. Yes. And when I spoke earlier about, you know, embracing the digital world, mm -hmm. with that comes quite a bit of risk as well. Right. So Alhamdulillah, what we're wanting to give uh, the public the assurance is that We've done a lot of risk management. We want to mitigate any cyber issues. Um, and so we've moved a lot of our payment platforms to um, digital. So okay. from you know online payments, direct deposits, debit card payments, even you can do the snap scan, okay. uh, you can pay from our app. Um, so what we try to do is give that convenience to the donor, ease of use wherever you are, if you have a handheld or you're in front of your laptop, or even if you're wanting to still come to Sands of Office, we have debit cards and the of facilities. But the idea of that is that whilst it's convenient for you, we mm -hmm. want to give the assurance that we've done 
the necessary things behind the scenes gotcha. to ensure that everything is solid. Mm. And what we always do, and we and you know something that we're very conscious of, we do that report back. Okay. So immediately after Ramadan, we will be coming out with our financials. Okay. So inshallah, that will also give uh, the community a sense of where every single cent that they given to Sanzaf and trusted with us, where that has gone mm. and what impact it was able to make. I think that's brilliant because mm. trans that transparency is what people would like, especially you know, an organization that uh, has to then distribute those funds to various communities as well. Yes, Mina, for those that would like to know more, mm. what is the most, like you said, you can come into any of your Sanzaf Absolutely. offices. Uh, digitally, how do people get hold of you? What yes. are the best methods? Okay, so they can follow us on Insta or on Facebook. But I think the simplest thing for everybody is to just do sansaf.org.za. Okay. And I think from there, it takes you to our projects, even all our contact details, because the eight different hubs, if you're sitting in Kimberley or in East mm. London, Durban, Houting, you know, you'll find the details of those offices, even if you're wanting specifically to contribute to a project there. Okay. I would like to leave them with sansaf.org.za. And then from there... You'll find us. Absolutely. Yeah. While I have you in studio, is there any message, Ramadan message, yes. that you would like to pass on yes. to our viewers? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. You know, um, we find ourselves as a Muslim community, you know, feeling a sense of being part of this one body. And if one part of that body, one limb is mm -hmm. aching, then the entire body is in pain. And we feel that because of our brothers and sisters in Palestine, brothers, sisters and children in mm -hmm. Palestine. So I think, you know, as much as we, you know, kind of celebrate a lot that we do in Ramadan, you're coming together a family, enjoying meals together, iftar, um, it's also time for us to reflect. Of course. Um, and to, you know, consider what is going on, but to you know, think about the unity of this dean and to take some lessons and some insights. You know, I often say in their hunger, mm. they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sustenance. Mm. In their pain, they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for relief. Mm. And in their loss, they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for solace. So what we've learned there is that the yakin is unmatched. And so during this month of Ramadan, let us also build on our iman to the extent sure. that we've seen, inshallah. So I want to wish everybody a blessed Ramadan and also one that is fulfilling and one in which there is a thought mm -hmm. for those who are in need because I mean, compassion feeds souls, I mean, inshallah. Jazakallah so much, Yasmina. Well said. Uh, all the very best with the rest of the year. We'll try and get you back into studio a couple inshallah. of months uh, to just touch base and see where you are. But all the very best and may all your future projects go from I mean, strength to strength, I mean, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Thank you for this opportunity as well. My absolute pleasure. And there we go, Yasmina Franca from um, the CEO of Sanzaf, chatting to us about the 50th year um, anniversary, but all the wonderful projects that will be happening in the interim as well. Thanks for watching us. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, inshallah. On technical duties, Sohel Barnes, and from myself, Luqman Shadrach, have a lovely evening. Assalamu alaikum.